What is Jakarta? A lot of people in the Tezos ecosystem, they know about the on-chain upgrades. However, there's not a lot of information in one consolidated place to tell you exactly what these upgrades contain. So in today's episode, I'm going to go ahead and take all the information I've gathered and put it into one 10 minute episode you guys can watch so you guys can learn more about the Jakarta upgrade and the Tezos 2022 roadmap. As usual, this is Mac from Cryptstar Staking, your number one channel for DeFi crypto news on the tube. If you have some spare tezzies and want to support the channel, feel free to go ahead and delegate to the Cryptstar Bakery. We have been running a Tezos Bakery for over three, four years now. And currently we are boycotting the TZBTC liquidity baking. Please go ahead and join our Telegram group so that way you can register and be eligible for the 12% fee. Also, just so you guys know, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm not saying to buy Tezos. I just want to go ahead and explain to you guys all the stuff that's going on in the Tezos ecosystem. That's why I'm here. So please just do your own research and only invest as much as you can afford to lose. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about the biggest thing in the Jakarta upgrade, which is roll-ups. Now, roll-ups, there are different types of roll-ups. It's not a fruit roll-up that you can eat, even though they taste really good. These are roll-ups to help Tezos scale. Now, what a roll-up is, is it's basically a smart contract where you can send your Tezos to a layer two solution, which is built on the layer one solution. And in that layer two solution, you can have much higher throughput, which means more transactions per second and higher finality in that layer two solution. So basically the tickets are gonna be used to go ahead and send Tez to the layer two solution, which will be the optimistic roll-ups that's just a very very basic explanation i didn't see that explanation on many of the nomadic labs articles now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the roadmap and talk about exactly what the different steps for the roadmap for implementing these roll-up solutions so you can go ahead and see here they have like this kind of roadmap and a series of proposals in 2022 to improve scalability on tezos the new tender bake consensus mechanism enables lower block times which will improve latency and finality how quickly a transaction is included and made irreversible by the network so this did not actually lower block times but it enables them to be able to lower the block time in the future and it added faster finality so that way you can withdraw and deposit to an exchange much faster so this tender break didn't actually improve the amount of transactions per second that teslas can do the only way to do this is by basically scaling and there's two types of scaling you have vertical scaling and then you have horizontal scaling and vertical scaling, you basically upgrade the hardware and then you increase the throughput that way. If you want to think of a blockchain that does vertical scaling, think of Solana or Everscale or even Harmony One because they use sharding to go ahead and scale. It's a little bit different than scaling up, but it's it's similar. Anyways, then you have horizontal scaling and horizontal scaling means building layer two on top of the layer one and you kind of even out the layer one and you have a very low hardware requirements for your layer one, but then you can have a lot more nodes running and verifying blocks, which makes it more decentralized. If you wanna go ahead and see more information about vertical scaling versus horizontal scaling, please check out my video up here. I go ahead and talk about the pluses and minuses of both. Rollups in a nutshell, the technical details of optimistic rollups on Tezos will be covered in an upcoming blog post, okay? Basically, a rollup is an entity on the main chain with its own address that is completely represents off-chain transactions, execution, and state updates. Assets can be deposited to the rollup and withdrawn by accounts, smart contracts, and other rollups. They adds a layer two so you can send Tezos or other tokens to the rollup and then you can do transactions on there and then go ahead and withdraw those back to the Tezos main chain. These rollups are going to be implemented in three phases and here it actually only says two phases but if you read through the whole document you'll see that they're actually possibly going to implement a third phase which is the most exciting phase in my opinion. The first phase will be the transactional rollups and this will be for basic transactions maybe DEX call functions I'm not sure. You can basically withdraw Tez and then you can transact between the different things but this transactional rollup isn't going to be used much by dApps because it's going to be sort of put out of commission once the smart contracts rollups are put in. You can go ahead and experiment with the transactional rollups that are coming out with Jakarta, but it's not recommended because it is a beta feature and they're going to come out with another level later, which is the smart contract rollups, which will definitely be the sort of more finalized version and it will include smart contract support. All right, let's go ahead and talk about my favorite part of the roadmap, which is the zero knowledge track. Now, this is the part of the roadmap that will basically fix the issues of withdrawal and will set Tezos apart from Ethereum and the other blockchains like CKB, Nervos Network that already have a layer two solution 
in place. The zero knowledge track is a track that will negate the withdrawal period from the layer two to the layer one. And currently with Arbitrum on Ethereum, it takes about seven days to go ahead and withdraw. CKB, I believe it also takes seven or 14 days. I can't remember which. Basically, ZK Rollups, how they do this is they attach a cryptographic proof of correctness with the commitment. No need for waiting for withdrawals. There's no waiting period for withdrawals. The big downside with this is that ZK proofs are currently highly time consuming to generate. It requires a disproportionate amount of computing power, especially when dealing with smart contracts. The zero knowledge team at Nomadic Labs is however working on improving this. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right into the Jakarta upgrade now that you guys kind of have a background about the roadmap. So Jakarta upgrade will basically implement something called Torus, which is the tra transactional optimistic rollup. And you can see here, it is the first stepping stone in the roadmap to go ahead and eventually hopefully get to this zero knowledge track. There are two parts to this. There are the roll of tickets and the ticketing mechanism is a little bit complicated. So if you go ahead and jump to the Marigold article, it'll explain to you exactly how tickets are or how smart contracts and tokens are currently on Tezos. Basically what you have is you have an FAT token and that FAT token has a ledger with the list of the owners of that token. So you don't actually own the token itself, just like you own Tezos. You own a sort of signature on the smart contract for that token. And you can kind of see this visually if you take a look at Better Call Dev. You can actually see this kind of physically if you go ahead and take a look at Better Call Dev. And this is the smart contract for the pixel tokens. You can see here it has the ledger here. And this is the big map. And this is basically tells you all the different owners of the pixel token and it basically this is a big map with all the owners so you see that they don't actually own the tokens so with tickets basically what it's going to do is you're going to actually own a ticket to that token so this opens the ability to be able to send fa2 tokens to the layer 2 solution this ticketing system will negate the token contract as a single point of failure so it kind of decentralizes the FA2 tokens a bit, but there's going to be a whole new token standard for this ticketing system. So let's go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. And you can see a sort of example that Marigold has written for us here regarding the ticketing feature that is coming with Jakarta. So if we scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, we can see Marigold has actually written an example for us to show us how tickets will work after the Jakarta upgrade. So when you take a look at layer two ecosystems and several blockchains, you are quickly stuck by having to bridge main chain tokens to several layer two tokens. Passing assets between layer twos is even worse. Having tickets as a first class citizen of all layer two provides a lot of simplicity and avoids a lot of useless fees for locking and unlocking on the main chain. So again, they're trying to re reduce fees and this ticketing system will basically help that. It allows layer two to be token agnostic and manipulate tickets regardless of their origin. As long as the token token is implemented using tickets, it is supported by all layer two implementing tickets for free without any dedicated infrastructure. It is not a simple smart contract providing tickets for tokens. So here's the example they give here. So you have a smart contract to mint CTES ticket for you. You vault CTES in a store in a storage contract for against the ticket. Then you'll be able to deposit this ticket to a Toru rollup. So you're depositing your CTES token to the Toru rollup. Then you can do a transaction for a specific amount on the layer two rollup. Then you can withdraw the remaining amount of tickets to Tezos and the tickets will basically be the tokens. Okay. Then you can deposit to the Deku sidechain, which is another layer two sidechain. Well, it's not, it's not a layer two solution. It's a sidechain. And then you can go ahead and use the ticket with a smart contract. Then you can withdraw to Tezos and finally burn your ticket from the initial ticketer against the remaining c -tests. You used in a Tezos optimistic rollups, sidechains are in the same ticket. So it's really cool. You can basically do a lot of the cool things with tickets. It'll make the FA2 tokens much more, I guess, malleable, and it'll kind of reduce the centralized smart contract issue that we kind of have now. Basically, this will enable rollups and tickets should be used with the rollups is what they're saying here. Torus are not run by a single company or a group of people. No one owns a smart contract campaigning a Toru. So basically what they're talking about here is the layer two solutions are not going to be for private chains necessarily. Anybody will be able to go ahead and run a validator node for these layer two solutions once they go ahead and implement them on the network. This means that the layer twos can be decentralized as long as you go ahead and run the layer two solution on your hardware. So you can deposit to the layer two solution. If the validator nodes shut down their, their layer two for some reason, you can actually start up your own layer two and then withdraw your tickets or your tokens. So using a Toro. So this is kind of the main points of the tour right now and which is kind of why they probably won't be used that much uh, for a while I don't think. So depositing assets are sent to a layer one smart contract for depositing. Assets are sent to layer one smart contracts which locks them and mints a corresponding Michelson ticket. The smart contract then sends a transaction containing the ticket and the re and a recipient layer two address to the rollup. And withdrawing, this is the biggest issue that I think is going to kind of inhibit the use of the layer two solutions, at least for now. 
and this is withdrawing. If the recipient of a roll-up transfer instruction is a layer 1 address, the roll-up sends the ticket to that layer 1, though it will remain frozen until the dispute period is over. This period will be two weeks initially, but might be changed in the future. Currently, Ethereum is one week. So we're actually double the withdrawal period of optimism. So I'm really excited, like I said, for this extra feature, the zero knowledge track. Once this comes out and we get more information on this, I'll try and update you guys on the channel. Now, why Toros are exper experimental even tells you here. It bears repeating that Toros are an experimental solution. They should only be used by products that are prepared to migrate to a different solution within a year. So they're going to have the smart contract solution coming out next. And after that, hopefully they will have this zero knowledge track coming out, which will probably be the one that we'll be using. Another really cool part about the Jakarta proposal is the liquidity baking escape hatch toggle switch. Now, if you didn't know what liquidity baking is, you can check out one of my previous videos. I was really, really I know, uptight about it. I had an argument with Arthur on Reddit regarding it because the past liquidity baking mechanism, basically you voted in liquidity baking and it's very hard to get it out. And if you don't know what's going on with inflation in the US right now, the same thing is going on with Tezos with liquidity baking. And it's not quite on the scale of the world. You know, it's not 8% inflation like the US is going through or 12%, whatever the cook number is. Basically, Tezos inflation rewards are getting put towards liquidity baking. And I think it's better to have more of an active discussion regarding which assets get these liquidity baking incentives. So with the polling mechanism it requires all bakers, Binance, Coinbase, this is the really big one, all the exchanges to go ahead and vote yes or no or pass on this liquidity baking inflation incentive. Now they, they can go ahead and add other tokens as well to liquidity baking with the Tezos pair. So they can add Kevin's USDTZ and he can ask for 10% of the liquidity baking allocation. We could turn that on and off as we please as bakers. This gives bakers a lot more voting power than the current, you know, we have, we have one proposal for Jakarta every three months. It's kind of boring, but with this new liquidity baking toggle switch, it makes it much more interactive for bakers especially when it comes to going in and voting for the inflation rewards of the Tezos network. So if you guys like this new escape hatch liquidity toggle, please let me know in the comments. For me as a baker, this is extremely great news. It's really exciting to have more functionality as a baker. So I'm super stoked. So that is it for today's update. I hope this will help you guys learn more about layer two scalability on Tezos and the roadmap for 2022. If you have any comments regarding this, if I messed up some of the information, or if you want me to dive deeper into one of the topics we discussed today, please let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys all in the next episode. Have a great day, guys. Peace out. Bro, we need to pop it. Everybody, go to Twitter and hashtag the things, pump it. You know, pump it real good. We need a good pump. Everybody deserves a nice Tezos pump.